Okay, I'll stick it down there, five minutes. Okay, uh, on your marks, get set, off you go. Water pollution is a problem. Just small changes in factors such as pH can have devastating impacts on ecosystems such as the coral reefs. With many constantly changing influences, keeping track of this data is currently impossible, involving millions of dollars and very complicated graphs. But we can help tackle this with one game-changing solution. It's fully autonomous. It's fully data-driven. It's fully duck. Meet what? We're bringing open data to the open ocean. Inexpensive to build and very efficient, this truly has the potential to be a category-defining innovation. Gathering ocean data every couple of months is a 20th century solution to a problem vital for our future today. What if we could gather, analyze, and publish all of this data in real time? It is our pleasure to introduce Boy. Okay, so our solution uh, is simple. And um, we, when we created Boy, we wanted to find a way of solving the immensely complicated problem of ocean pollution in a way that involved everyone, not just an elite group of scientists. After all, it's our world and we should have a say too. So not only do we have powerful sensors that many top scientists use anyway, but we've married this to a user interface that's really easy to understand and really engaging. And our use of live video streams and SMS alerts means that anyone can get involved, whether they're in a classroom or they're, they're just at home and it's a hobby. We envisage a world in which everyone has access to a little or large boy-like creature like what over there uh, in order to explore the, the world of the ocean. Rubber ducks have a history of teaching us a lot about oceanography. Uh, in 1992, 28,000 rubber ducks uh, float, started floating around the ocean after a container sank. And just from their movements, oceanographers have been able to track ocean currents. This is version two. Imagine a fleet of ducks like that, but packed full of sensors, easily upgradable, uh, really cheap to build. The, the potential for monitoring our ocean and even tackling the problem is great. And the future looks incredibly bright. We made it uh, for what? We made uh, it modular, so you can easily upgrade the motor, you can get rid of the duck, you can keep the duck, you can attach, for example, a skirt to deal with um, oil spills in a long line for a fraction of the cost of existing solutions. It can also be used to track marine wildlife uh, in lakes and reservoirs to track water quality and in policing operations to monitor shipping. I would love you to tweet using the hashtag WhatTheDuck um, and uh, uh, we'll jump into a live demo. We have two main interfaces for this product. The first one is a mobile app that we built using PhoneGap. And the second one is the main web interface, which we'll cut across to now. What you can see here is, is tracking the path of where the duck's been. If we have a look at the red icons, we can click them and we can see what the readings were and at what time the reading was taken. And the current yellow position of the duck at the moment is where the duck would be. With the controls, we can actually start the duck from a remote location. So we can start it from here. So for example, if we enter long, latitude and longitude coordinates and then click navigate to location, it should send to the duck. Oh, okay. um, so that would send over, and then we can start the motor as well remotely from this location. If we look over now to the instance as well, we take in UKGov open data um, up to where nearest pollution hotspots are, and then Dark autonomously goes to those locations when it's picked them up from the server. We cut across now to the graphs as well. We can see, we can plot the recordings of the data that the duck has taken in. There's also a live video stream where it's cut across from the Pi cam over there. And if we take the duck off the center of the screen, we can relocate it, finding Find My Boy. And we can get the hashtag what the duck Twitter feed as well from the website. <laughs> um, we are Boy. My name's Ben. I'm Harry. And I'm Benedict. And we'll be happy to take any questions. Wow, did you do it under five minutes? <laughs> Great, OK. Um, Wow, special bonus for doing it in under five minutes. Okay, we've got uh, two minutes of questions now. And sorry, can we just clarify? The reason that didn't work is we just lo lost internet connectivity. Um, so <laughs> apologies for that. So we may soon going 
Some of you yeah, earlier when we were presenting it, we got it working. <laughs> when, when we were demo, setting up. <laughs> right. Um, comments, questions from the judges. Two minutes. I'm just interested to know. So, in total, how much does that cost to produce all of the parts inside the duck? Okay, so because we're using um, off-the-shelf uh, consumer goods, obviously the price is much higher, uh, but it, we're looking around uh, certainly less than 50 pounds, probably 50, 60 pounds, um, and obviously with scale and make, manufacturing your own components, you could probably bring it down even further. I've got a question. So um, when, you, when, it's, when it's kind of in the river or whatever, how does it send data back to the server? Uh, if we had uh, money for a 3G uh, uh, connection, then obviously that would make it a lot easier. Our current solution, uh, which we've been using at the center, is just a mobile phone connected via Wi-Fi, and then it's got internet connectivity. But in, in a real use case, then you could just use 3G for satellite connectivity. Sure. Um, what sensors has it actually got implemented at the moment? Um, at the moment, it's got a DHT sensor, but we've configured it so there's a large breadboard where you can easily plug in more sensors, and the data stream is thrown across as one data stream of JSON data, so it's really easy to edit. Um, so, for example, we've adapted it so you can put in a UV sensor. For, for example, if you're on Australian beaches where there's real risk of um, human damage from UV rays, um, then you can actually get a UV monitor and send it straight back to beach control, and it can monitor them there. Um, what's DHT? Uh, the T11 sensor uh, yeah, is a, a humidity and temperature sensor, um, and you can configure for both water with a little thing at the bottom and also air temperature. Uh, uh, what? Go on, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, what hardware have you got inside controlling it all? Okay, so inside there are two Raspberry Pis. It's connected to a GERT board, which is uh, then connected to a DC motor. We're using pulse width modulation from the GERT board in order to control very, very precisely the motor. Uh, we had to use a library called Wiring Pi, um, uh, a motor called Wiring Pi for this because the hardware-based pulse width modulation is really terrible. Uh, we've also got a Pi camera and then servos, um, uh, a, a breadboard for the servo as well. Okay, that is it. Big round of applause for Boy. A masterclass in timing. That's very good.